Hello, everyone. Jose J. Garcia with Mohome University. Very special guest here today. He is a real estate investor, real estate consultant, real estate specialist, owns multiple businesses, coaches. And here it is, Hunter Pascal. How are you, sir? Very good. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you for having me on today. I'm very excited to be on your show. I've been watching a couple of your clips. It's pretty awesome. So I love your energy. I love what you're doing. And thanks for having me here. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to talking to you. Um, so we've met, we met through Connection Networking. It's a lot of the same things, uh, successful fields that we do. But uh, for those that don't know Hunter, tell us about you. Well, about uh, a few years back, I'm a, probably around 30 years back, my landlord raised my rent, I was going to raise my rent to $75 a month. And I said, wow, you're going to raise my rent $75 a month. I want to go buy a house. I'm going to go find a house I can buy. That was my motivation to pain is a motivator. So just know pain is a motivator. So for me, that's kind of like I've been doing the business. You know, when I learn something, I'll do it. But uh, I went ahead and bought my first house, uh, owner finance, two and a half acres, uh, which was a farm kind of like thing uh, back when I was 22 years old. So I'm 61 now. So that's a couple of days ago. So that's how I got started in the real estate myself. And my first goal was to buy a house a year for five, five years. And I had five houses in three years, which is not a, not a lot in today's industry. Cause you know, there's a lot, but I'm talking about actually owning them, not right. flipping. So I'm talking about controlling and that was my goal. And that's why I started in the goals went on and on and on. As you know, we get bigger, better ideas, you know, more excited about what we're doing in the business and helping more people and the goals grow. It's like what you're doing here today, talking about, you know, motivation, getting things done and that's what it is just get her done well that, that's huge though i mean 22 i i should have tried to own a, a house at that point but i was nowhere near in sight so at that age you don't think about tomorrow you think about now and oh, i get to the kind of thing and that get to it kind of just carries on and on so that's actually pretty awesome that at 22 you already had that drive that i have to own something i'm not just going to throw more money out because that's what's happening is you were already paying rent and then they wanted to jack it up even more. It's only 75. Well, we say only, but I'm sure, you know, at that time, it seemed like, well, that's just that much. 30 money. years ago. Yeah. 30 years ago. So yeah. hours, you know, you say it fast, it's not a lot of money, but it's every month. So it just, yeah. you know, it motivated me. So, hey, things are going to motivate people in their lives different ways. And money is my motivator when it's got to come out of my pocket. There you go. Uh, absolutely. And again, when you rent, you never own. So, I mean, it, it is just tossing it out. So you started real estate at that point. You started investing after you got your own your own home. Yeah, I started looking at actually I was already watching the info commercials at night, you know, young and wild and free and, and said, you know, I'd really want to own this. And, and so that's what gave me the boost to do it. I didn't have any education, no, no, no training, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just started picking up the phone and started calling people that had houses for sale and ended up with it. So, yeah, so the training part and the uh, uh, relationships that we built along the way get us to where we're going. So that's that's been huge in my life and my business. So We'll talk about this here in a minute, but that's already huge what you're saying there because you said – you took action solely on what you wanted to do. You didn't have the education, the credentials, none of the above. And that's one thing that so many people have, but yet don't take action. So we'll get into that here, here in a minute. Absolutely. So what kind of uh, investments, real estate do you do most so now? Uh, mostly now we're doing, uh, you know, I've been known for, you know, the big check guy cashing, you know, out on million dollar homes, liquidating properties. And that's what we specialize in. That's what I've been doing for years. And, and now I'm consulting people in that in, in that arena, mm -hmm. in that area. So mostly residential, you know, mostly residential. And the reason I did residential from mobile homes to multi-million dollar homes was because uh, in the beginning, I thought, you know, 20,000, 30,000 is all I could really handle mm -hmm. until I figured out how to handle real estate with other people's money and, and still make lots of money. So that's what I did. And, uh, but yeah, so knocking down big short sales. So we negotiate debt. We're a short sale negotiator. That's my main, the fame is I'm doing it the longest that I know even all my peers keep saying, man, you're still doing short sales. And I said, yeah, you know, well, they suck. And I said, I know it sucks the money right out of the bank. We love them. We love <laughs> short sales. So I've stuck with, it. I got a good team, got a good system. And if it works, you know, if it's ain't fixed, don't, don't, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's there what we've been go. doing for long years. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you found a niche that works, you made it work and it works to your advantage. You never thought about commercial, something bigger, buildings? Uh, yeah, we, we do. I mean, I'm in a 5,000 square foot building now that I own free okay. and clear. Uh, I've got a couple of commercial buildings here and there. I just bought a commercial building in November. We're going to repurpose it. So, yes, uh, that's, you know, where we've gone. We've grown into some. We bought, sold commercial, light commercial, not big stuff, because I've seen, I've been in those. I mean, I've been in contracts with casinos and all the big high rises and stuff like that. My challenge was either at the time, lack of knowledge, because it's been years ago, or cash to close or whatnot, or having a right deal. And that's what makes the difference. As you know, you make your real estate, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell. So I can never really see, you know, the dollars were so large for me. I'm talking about millions, you know, millions of dollars on these deals, but it took so long just to get it all together. And when you're trying to do all that by yourself, just like short sales, you just can't. You got to have a team. If you don't have a team, you don't have the relationships or a relationship of a team, then it's really hard to put deals like that together just by yourself. There's just a lot that goes on, a lot of moving parts. And if you can't keep up with it, and as a young investor at the time, I was really touching on something that I probably shouldn't have been touching on. But hey, I got a lot of good lessons out of the failures of our businesses that we've gone through too as well. So, so big hotels, motels, not that I wouldn't do it today. It's mm -hmm. just, I haven't really seen any really good deals that, you know, want to make, you know, and it, it's creative stuff. It's creative financing. I understand it. And using other people's money today, we could take them down, but you know, with this market, with this COVID, who knows what commercials, <laughs> a lot of commercials is going to be repurposed. I'm telling you right now. And, and, and the money's being repurposed as well, you know, with the crypto and all that. So it's, it's just really, really uh, been something I focused on. Say, say I, I'm kind of the guy that once you get something, you don't want to let go. So focusing on residential and getting really good at it. You know, you've heard the 10,000 hour rule, you know, get to know your product, get to know what you're doing. So uh, 10,000 hours and, and then real estate. I've been doing all aspects of real estate, not just short sales. And, and again, the commercial is there. Like I said, I've done some and uh, I've, I've funded a couple of them, but you know, we're, we're working on some stuff right now and some multi-units and stuff like that. Well said. And you said one thing on there is post-COVID uh, opportunity. That definitely, I like to say, is opportunity in the making, for sure. There's some things to be seen. Uh, I've heard the statement. I haven't a commercial. I probably won't ever do commercial. I don't know. Every day changes. We always get into something new, but uh, whether it's commercial or single, family residential, all the deals are the same. There's just more money and time. Would you agree with that? More zeros, man. More zeros, <laughs> you know, commercial, maybe a little more knowledge because, you know, residential commercial is a little bit different. It's not all the same. We're doing some lot splits right now. I think you and I talked about some stuff back in the past. We got some lots we're splitting, some mobile homes we just purchased or we're on the property, just revamped them and they're all cash cows and so Let's talk about yeah, those. I mean, I, it's just taking action, dude. It's just, it's just really taking action. You know, don't worry about your mistakes because you're going to learn through them. You're not going to go to jail or be killed from real estate, you know, unless you do something absolutely stupid. You'll and, get a lot of no's, but <laughs> you're going to get a lot of no's. There's no doubt about it. I, I mean, I got a lot of gray hair from a lot of no's, you know, so, <laughs> and uh, it's just, that's, that's the experience. That's a learning process. When somebody told me, no, I knew it was just next, you know, it, I'm just that closer to the yes. And that's all I need to know. And uh, don't take it personal, mm -hmm. you know, and I used to take it personal and I figured out how not to take it personal. You know, not everybody's you know, desires are my desires. So I have to work with what I get and make good with what I know. Les Brown said, with every no, there's a yes right around the corner. So get them out of the way and get to it quickly. So yeah. absolutely. And let's talk about mobile homes, because in the past, we actually were close for doing a uh, mobile home deal. It wasn't a slam dunk at the end. We ended up pulling back. This wasn't a deal that really made sense at the time, um, even looking back now. The numbers just weren't there. So but the opportunities are definitely out there for mobile homes. Uh, tell us about some of those mobile homes you do. You, you talk about you have cash cows, but that's what they I call them uh, ATM machines. ATM machine, good, good analogy for sure. Um, you know, we've got, uh, I've kind of accidental, accidentally went in a couple of those. I uh, was at an investor club one night, I don't know, years ago, and some guy was selling this mobile home. 
for uh, I forgot what it was, twenty five hundred bucks or something. I go, really? I mean, is that a, he was announcing it? So I say, hey, man, I, I might look at that. <laughs> so uh, and the reason I did, the only reason I did it was because uh, a property that I took uh, subject to owner financing. Uh, the county was widening the road, so it was doing an intimate domain. So they were taking my real estate. They were taking my house that was there, but I salvaged the wells and the power and all that stuff, which is no mm -hmm. big deal. But what I wanted, I was looking for something to put in that spot, and sure. you know, building wouldn't have been really it because it was a smaller lot. So uh, I, I went and looked at that that mobile home that night. Taking action, we talked about that early. I took action right out of that meeting, nine o'clock at night. Drove over to this place, which I kind of knew where it was. I didn't really know that, but when I drove up to it in the dark, 10 o'clock at night, I'm putting my lights on this mobile home saying, I'll buy this thing, but I only paid 1500, not 2,500. So I already negotiated a thousand dollars down just by taking action and going and getting it. So what was really unique was it was a mobile home. My sister used to live in years ago. And I was like, wow, wow. I still have that mobile home today. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a cash cow, man. I mean, we pulled it down the street, cost me, cost me more to drag it and hook it up than it did to pay for it, right? Tow it and move it, you know? But it's a cash cow. We're getting $1,000 a month for that thing. And I've been getting $1,000 a month for that thing forever. It's just, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's every month. I mean, so we have more than those. That's one. So we have multiple. So now that I see that they, they don't really take a lot of, you know, work and they're kind of easier to fix. Quickly what year is that one, by the way? Hey. What year is that home, by the way? I, I'm curious. The one you moved. 71. 71. So, see, for those of you tuning in and thinking, oh, mobile homes depreciate, yes, they do depreciate. They're like a yeah. vehicle, they have a van title, whatever, but they're making you money. What does it matter what the worth of the home is if it continues to pour out money? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. I, 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 if I sold this mobile home today on the lot that it's on, I could probably get about 70, 80,000 for it. So, two bedroom, two bath. Now, my mobile homes, I don't know, maybe I should show some pictures. I got crown mold. I got tile. I got granite. I got nice stuff in mine. We rehab my mobile home just as if we would do a, a house. Okay. So I tell my contractors, hey, I want this thing hot. I want this thing when they walk in, drop dead gorgeous. So wow. they can say, so when they walk in, they forget it's a mobile home. It looks like a house. And that's what I want. That's my transformation. I want when people walk in our door to look at it as a house, not a mobile home. Now, your exit strategy is more so buy and hold is what I'm getting here. Uh, well, we do. Uh, we do have a lot of buy and hold. Uh, uh, the only reason I can't buy and hold no more because my my uh, my my wife manages my property. So she goes, no more. Forty's enough. I said, forty's <laughs> enough. She goes, yeah, I'm one person. I'm managing forty properties. I said, no, we got a whole team here. But the the the, the thing is, she just sees that cash coming in. So she wants to take that cash we've made, and then she wants to retire a little bit. You know, no, I said, retire. No. I said, honey, we're just getting going. She goes, oh, my God. She goes, I, 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 actually, my wife is the one who got me into this business. So I told her, look, you're the one who said I can do better than what I was doing because I was working at home, working for my, a family business, bringing on $300 a week. That's what I was wow. making when I started this business. So, And I was working 12 to 15 hour days. So if you say you don't have time or you don't have money, I did it with no time, with no money. And that means you can do it too. I'm going to drop a lot of hashtags on a lot of this that you're saying. Because for those of you, and you said something early too, when you took action on that mobile home, you said you went out there at nine o'clock. And that's where people fail is tomorrow, later. Yeah. It's like, no, you need to take action today. And that is an excuse that people use. You know, back when I quit my corporate America job uh, last July and I was working around the clock and it's like, you have to do that to get ahead. There's no way around it. I mean, you can't clock out and hope it comes around. You have to go out and get it. So you've been around in real estate a long time. You've seen the in and outs and obviously invest in difference. How has real estate changed over the years? Well, well for us, you know, it, it, the, the real estate's always changing. So it's not like over the years, it's, it's always moving up or down, right? It's going one way or sideways. It could be sideways, up or down. So over the years, you know, I've seen massive growth and uh, it's just amazing. You know, I'm still, I live, I literally work and live about 12 miles where I was born and raised in my parents' house where I was brought up, which I tried to buy at one time. But um, I don't know. It's like a trophy, right? So. I, I <laughs> so so it didn't happen but i bought some other houses around it and stuff like that but you know it's just amazing uh, uh amazing what you have to do to get going and stay going 
And, and what that means is, is, I mean, I was, I wasn't given a, a silver spoon. I had to work for everything I got. I mentioned I was bringing home $300 a week working 12, 15 hour days. So I had the desire to change my life. And I had somebody that just mentioned to me in my ear, Hey, you can do better than this. You know, and cause I was already did my first deal, my first transaction, I made $43,000 on, didn't know what the hell I was doing. I took it subject to, and then somebody else buys a long story how it worked out. It's kind of crazy, but at the end of the day, I made $43,000 on my first transaction. So that is a motivation for me. You know, I'm working 19 for 19 grand a year, all year, the $43,000 in 90 days or whatever it was. So that was the decision that Light I ball. said, hey, I'm in the wrong field, I'm done. So after 20 <laughs> years in the family business, I left and I've been motivated ever since. Well, and that's what it takes sometimes is that it, I'm not even going to say that little win because that was a pretty huge win. That sounds like a slam dunk. So, but it got you triggered to go on and get more. Absolutely. How has the epidemic uh, affected you and your business and or what has it taught you? Yeah, great, great question. So affected our business. We, we become essential because I mean, it's real estate and all that. So we really didn't get shut down. We were shut down maybe two weeks in the beginning. But after that two weeks, I don't know what happened, but we sold everything we had in, in stock. Well, I say stock. I mean, stuff that we're rehabbing and we're, my, we're trying to pre, pre-sale, you know, before we even done rehabbing. And we really didn't have to because every time we get something, we throw it on the market. And sometimes we have to throw it on the market, sign the front yard, throw it on the market because I do own a real estate company. It would sell in days. And we're still saying thing we're finding out now. So the covid scared us a little bit but it increased our sales we've had the best year since wow. covid hit we've had more sales we did over 12 million in real estate sales since march and even today i was just talking i was on a, 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 a facebook live today we've already closed sold uh four deals this year sold real estate and we've already got approved from banks three to four i know three for sure four coming approved from the banks before before January ends now. So it has definitely uh, helped us. What we've learned is that, um, you know, the cheese is moving, the market's shifting, the world has shifted, not just the market, the world has shifted. Mm -hmm. So it's moved in different directions. And some people can't keep up with it direction it's moving. I remember, hey, I'm old enough to know when the internet came out, you know, and all that stuff happened. So I know when, you know, KY 2020, 20, you know, year 2000 is all supposed to shut down KY 20, whatever it's called. So I've been through a lot, you know, in this industry and watching stuff like this happen. You know, 2008 was the crash of the market from the banks, yeah. you know, financial crashes. Now you have COVID and it's not a financial crash. It's coming to that because of nobody working or can't work, right? So it's a different kind of crash. You know, it's the virus crash. So what I've learned is you better have good relationships when times get bad. You better know how to get capital when times get rough. And you kind of build those relationships and keep those relationships. And, and I've got to, to reinvent, reinvent some of the relationships that I've had, reinvite them in and talk to them and, and things are going well and business have changed. But, you know, we have been on, on fire since then. And again, we've done our best and- good. Uh, we, you know, here we are with you. We're on Zoom today. So a lot of different relationships that we've built, you know, and, and that's what I'm finding. It's more people, you know, they're saying, hey, I want you to come out. I say, hey, why don't we get on a Zoom call? It's a lot easier. Me driving to you and doing, let's just get on a Zoom call and make it happen. And that's what, and, it, and it's been really doing really well. So it's, it's, so it's changed a lot. It's going to the digital world. I know it is. You know, I've been involved in crypto for a couple of years now. And I see it, you know, I see the writing on the wall. I see real estate being sold through blockchain. I see all the stuff that's, it's already happening. So I already see the things that are happening in the future. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get a piece of that, you know, yeah. and bring people with me to get it. And get ahead of the game. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of things have changed for sure. And I didn't like it at first, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm like you, why waste time on driving over there? Just call me on here. I can see just fine. So that I hope kind of sticks around. I know the world's going back to normal to whatever extent that is, but uh, I, I'm not opposed to Zoom anymore. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So Hunter, I've heard you talk about social media, which is huge. You have to have it in your business. I mean, at this point, you can, and for a while now, you've been able to basically 
advertise your real estate or mobile homes all on social media, complete a full transaction all through social media. How imperative is social media for branding and marketing for your business? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I was at JT Fox, you know, I guess we can mention the name, right? JT Fox, I was at his uh, top 1% down in uh, uh, Naples. That where it is, Naples and his house. And it was about four years ago now. And I was doing a foreclosure Friday class on social media because my uh, prior to that, prior to four years ago, my wife and I took about a two year stance where we didn't do a whole lot. The office is going, we had deals, things were happening. And then I get a call from my, or an email from my uh, top negotiator and go, hey, you know, your funnel is kind of drying up. I said, what do you mean my funnel is drying up? She goes, well, you need to get more deals in here. I said, well, go ahead, start getting, she goes, no, 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 no. That's your responsibility. That's your job, you know, because these are girls that are really working the system we got here. So I said, okay, so I want to do the easiest, softest thing, you know, to get the biggest bang for my buck. So I started doing social media foreclosures for Friday. So every day, every Friday at three o'clock, I get on and I do a deal or I do somewhere I'm at or I interview somebody. So I've been doing this for four years prior to the pandemic. So what it's done is not that I got this big following or nothing. But people do see my videos, and I know it because I'm getting calls from Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, Florida, freaking uh, other states. Yeah. They're saying, hey, we'd like you to come speak, you know, and now the COVID, you can't. But so people are seeing me, what I'm doing, and saying, hey, I remember you. You've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So what it's done is I've gone to the social media. Now the social media is, is bringing it back, you know. And, 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 and all aspects of it, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, you know, all the social medias, you know, Facebook and, and Zoom now. And it's just amazing uh, of what I've created. The funnel's been filled. The girls are happy. You know, matter of fact, I've created some new marketing techniques and stuff like that through this social media because you got to be different. I've been shut down by Facebook, you know, all the stuff that happens, you know, when you're in social media, you don't know what you're doing. And if you say the wrong thing or get out the wrong thing, you're saying you're in Facebook jail. So I had to get out of that and even ads. I mean, I couldn't even post any paid ads. I said, what are they crazy? I want to pay you money to run an ad. Let me do it. So anyway, that, that social media has been great, but also at the same time, it can be devastating. So let me give you an example. Uh, we rent out properties. So when a tenant comes in, we look on their social media and see what they do. So instead of just using their, instead of using the, uh, the skip trace number one and then a credit report and checks and all that number two, we go a little bit farther, do Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and see what kind of tenants we're bringing into our homes because we want long-term tenants. And by the way, you, you asked that question earlier about what COVID did for us. We have 40 rentals that, you know, that are almost free and clear, almost all of them. No, no late, no missed payments since COVID. So that's the relationship we built with our tenants. And we've had one or two calls and say, hey, I won't be able to make my payment. So my wife would get on the phone and say, hey, well, you can make a weekly payment? Yeah. So they made weekly payments to keep up their main monthly payment. So we worked with them. And it was only one or two. You know, knock on wood now. We just talked about this last night coming from Longboat Key that we are blessed that none of our tenants, you know, what if we were hundreds of those investors or landlords out there have got mortgage payments they got to pay the lender? And then you're not getting a rental payment. That would suck, you know, because I'm not going to use my savings account to save my real estate. You know, I'm a good short sale guy. If I had to, you never know what happened. I might have to take my own stuff down. But, <laughs> you know, and that's why banks probably don't like loaning money to me. But, uh, you know, but that that's the thing. Uh, you have to be careful. I don't know where I got off that. I wanted to answer a question earlier about COVID and what it's done. Oh, it's great. done nothing to bless us, man. It's just blown us up. No, for sure. And, and I mean, social media is free. That, that's one thing is like, you, you, why not use it? It's there. It's available. It's free. I mean, it only works to your convenience. So, and you did mention actually doing a background in a sense to people. I, I do that. I do myself as I'll kind of just link it to the Facebook and let me just see what kind of person this individual is. So, yeah. so that's huge. And in the Facebook did you, jail. Did you look at my Facebook before you got me on this interview? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I already knew who you were. So you, you're good. <laughs> Yes, sir. And Facebook jail. We've all been there. Uh, one yeah. of the ways that I coach people how to uh, brand market and advertise. And that's one topic I touch on is don't do this because you will get their Facebook jail. So, yeah, that, that's funny stuff there. But where do you see the market in the next year or so? Oh, good question, man. I tell you, 
I thought I had a pretty good understanding. Uh, we were, like I said earlier, we were driving, my wife and I, were, we have some property in Longboat Key is in Bradenton, Sarasota area of Florida, which is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we had a few Airbnbs over there. We ran out, we were coming back and we're seeing all the development going on, all the apartment buildings, all this, I'm going like, wow. you know, I, I don't know, man, this is crazy. You know, I know the bottom's gonna fall out, just mm -hmm. don't know when um, and how much. How much of the bottom is, 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 is are we going to keep printing money? Are we going to keep getting stimulus checks? Is that going to keep us rolling? It can't. It, it can't keep going on like that. Handouts aren't any good. They're not. I mean, if you and I were handed out, you know, a million bucks today, we wouldn't be on this or maybe probably, I don't know where we'd be, but, you know, <laughs> we wouldn't be the same people, right? I mean, I had to work for my millions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I respect money and I, I respect uh, property and I respect people and others and the government and all that but when they start handing out money and, and trying to fix things like that that's just not a good idea for me so for the for what the market's going to be where it's going to go you know I know it's going to decline because I'm in the short sale world I look at the numbers I'm tracking the numbers I'm seeing what's happening I'm seeing the foreclosures going on I'm talking to behind the scene bankers mitigators People, my relationship, talking about earlier relationships, I've got relationships from a long time ago, you know, the 2000s and, and before, you know, and I go back to those. I've, I went back to that. I said, hey, man, what do you think about the market? Even my good friend, Frank McKinney, you know, he just says, you know, the market's going to move. The market's going to come up. The market's going to come down. It's been doing that since 1929. Mm -hmm. What is it for the fast and furious right now? is you know there's going to be a lot of good deals out there there's a lot of people are making decisions because of the way the market is and i'm talking about people that's had real estate for a long time and they're just ready to go they're done we were over in longboat i'm going to share it i'm going to stop this lady from new york has been rehabbing this house this flood came in a month ago because we were trying to buy the house from her but you know because it was a slow rehab i said man she must be tired of this rehab by now right it's got to be a motivated rehabber right and so then this flood came last month or so, and we got to go inside this house. It was a brand new house, drywalled, finished. Is this freaking deep? Six to 12 inches of drywall wet in that property. And there's a for sale sign by a real estate agent right in the front yard. Motivation. Motivation is what's going to turn this market. So it's going to be who's more motivated than your neighbor or you or where this market's going to go. Very good. Uh, there's a lot of nuggets tips being dropped on here for sure uh, hunter we appreciate that what do you say to those trying to get into business at this time or into real estate more so to, to really push them give them that boost to get in there well i tell you uh you know my wife and i are self-generated and uh self-sufficient self-funded per se i mean i always uh, i'm kind of proud of that you know we I shouldn't say proud but it's a self-funded in other words we didn't get a lot of funding we couldn't get a lot of help but i had to do a lot of other people's money and all that. So if you're brand new and you're just starting out in any business, just know that you're going to have to work. It's not going to be something easy. There's going to be work. I don't care what it is. If it's internet, crypto, whatever you're doing, real estate, any kind of business, just get to know that business inside and out. That's the thing you need to know. For me, that was my goal when I started was when I, and when I paid, get coaching. So when I paid for coaching, I took that coaching I paid for and I made it work before I went on to the next level of coaching. Mm -hmm. I've spent hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars in coaching and self-help development, but I always used what I bought to make some kind of effort or profit or better my business with that coaching before I would allow myself to move on to another coach, unless the coaching was bad, but never coach. There's no coaching I got was bad. It was always good. And that's what I always got to remember, even though, you know, I may not like the presenter, I may not like the way it was, but the, but I had to make the choice as a person of, of in business, how I wanted to run my business and how I wanted to do it. So if you're new and you're getting into it, number one, I'd say hire a coach. If you can't hire a coach, freaking, you're going to have to wish to work your ass off until you understand what needs to be done. It's easier to get a coach. It's cheaper to get a coach than it is to learn it on your own. Trust me or a partner. So sometimes your coach might come in a form of a partner, maybe a money partner. I mean, that's the way I coach a lot of people. You know, I just had a student sign up the other day. 
and he calls up and sent me a deal. And I said, well, before I can actually work on your deal, you, you got to kind of be a partner of ours. You got to be in our system. You got to be, you got to have some skin in the game. I'm not going to be on the phone call with you and tell you how to do your deal without, you know, some skin in the game. He goes, look, I'm just not only going to put skin in the game, but I'm bringing you two deals when I come to the table. And I said, well, that's awesome. So the deals that they he had at hand, I restructured the deal where the guy would have to come out of money in his, out of his pocket. And I said, here, use the owner's money that's already there to financing. So it was creative. So I like a lot of creative stuff and I like to use other people's money. And, and that's what I think you should do. If you're new, use other people's money. Don't lose what you don't have. You know, don't get into freaking debt. Like uh, all the college kids are getting to, I mean, I've heard some enormous numbers, two, 300,000, $500,000 in debt, you know, to be in college. And you got to have that on your head, man. I don't know if I can make it through that. I started with nothing. You know, I didn't have any debt. I didn't have any knowledge or skill, but what I did have is I had a desire to change my life. And I believe that's what this is about is that you have to, even if you don't know what you're doing, just follow somebody that you believe in, make sure, let me, let me give you one example of how to make sure you want to see their HUDs. You want to see their bank account. So when anybody talks about coaching me, I says, Hey, I can prove it to you. I can show you my bank accounts. I can show you my HUDs. I'll do that for you just to let you know you're dealing with the right person or people or companies that know what they're doing. So I do suggest that if you are getting somebody and you're getting coached by somebody, try to give them some credibility for you, testimonials or whatnot, to make sure you're putting your money or your time and your energy in the right person because you are giving them part of your life. So if you're concerned or if you're as serious about being successful, you're going to be serious about who you pick to be successful with. Beautifully well said. You didn't have any money. You started because you had drive and whatever you were learning, you implemented it. And that's huge. You implement nothing works unless you do. Absolutely. Hunter, I follow your YouTube channel now. And with all that you're dropping on here, why do you not have more videos? Yeah, well, you know, we had that conversation about one hour ago. She said, yeah, I'm doing this and doing that because I, I did pull down a lot of YouTubes because I had a lot of training material on there. So I pulled it down. I had a lot of older material on there. So I pulled it down. So I didn't want people to grab what I had in the past, thinking that what I'm doing today is what I was doing in the past. Okay. So that's one reason. So we did pull down a lot of, a lot of videos uh, from there. We are, re and again, th it's funny you ask that question. It's just another, um, uh, another nugget you're passing out a nugget to me because you're saying hey what about your youtube videos well and this is just another suggestion you know like if you heard it once you heard it twice you heard it three times you know if it looks like a duck walks like a duck must be a duck <laughs> so now you're telling me hey honey youtube has not got enough your presence is there and i know to be honest with you my presence is not a lot of places and i don't know why i mean i do know why but it's just that you know I'm busy. You know, we're good. I'm doing bit, bit and yes, we can do more. Yeah, it, it does. It, 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 not that I'm doing it. I'm not doing any of that. You know, uh, the YouTube, I mean, I wouldn't even know how. So uh, that's another thing. So I have people doing it. I just have to delegate better. That's my problem. You know, I've got a little challenge. We all going to when we grow, they're called growing pains. You know, <laughs> I used to do, uh, what was it? MySpace. Come on, man. I've been up since MySpace <laughs> I was doing videos back then, you know, people were loving it, following it, had a lot of followers. Absolutely. Two more questions for you. So, and I like to ask people, you know, successful like yourself, what does the word success mean to you? Success means to me that I can do what I want, when I want, how much I want. Yes. <laughs> so, success to me. And, and then, and then when I say I, and in that I, that's a big, so I like to help people that are less fortunate than us, my wife and I. So I like to uh, give to the church. I like to do that, you know, go go to Iceland if we want. Say, hey, where do you want to go for anniversary? Let's go to Iceland. Where, what, where the hell's Iceland? I don't even know where, I'm, my geographics are not very good, my geology. And so <laughs> where, where is it? I don't know where Iceland is. I thought it was uh, up at the end of the, the, the country here. And oh no, Iceland's a freaking <laughs> island out by itself out in the freaking Europe. Thought, wow, let's go. So we went, I mean, so spontaneous, just go and don't have to look at the freaking price tag. That's what I like. That's success for me. Great. Absolutely. What is next for Hunter? 
what is next? Great question. Great question. So um, the next the next chapter, maybe a book. You know, my my good friend Frank McKinney has written seven books now. The time I've met him, really makes me sick. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, so I maybe with a book in there. I, I've run some chapters. I've run some stuff. You know, but I think I really need to sit down and really, you know. You know, put it all in writing and, and give 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 some nuggets like you're saying here. Some of the best things, the hunterisms, you know, like my trademark, what comes out of your mouth goes in your pocket. I mean, that's my I've got that trademark with US and and just you know, helping people. I think consulting more. I wanna I love doing what I'm doing. I love helping people and I love seeing people to get successful. So maybe some more consulting, maybe you know, things like that, but definitely uh you know, I love to golf, fish, and fly. So I like doing them things, those three things too. So, so maybe more of that. So there you go. I got to ask, since you keep mentioning Fred McKinney, I just spoke to him in, uh, in books. Have you ordered his latest book, Aspire? I have ordered 100 of his books. Aspire. Oh, man, I ordered 50. So now I got to find people. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great salesman. I'll tell you that. Well, a- yeah. So we were, we got the opportunity to go see Frank do that little you know, all that video stuff that he did, putting it, putting it together. We were invited down to Delray Beach and then uh, unknown to us, uh, just, um, I guess, right before Christmas, uh, Frank held a uh, meeting for, uh, for his uh, Caring House project. And uh, he, he, he uh, voted us in or asked us to join as a board members of the Caring House Foundation. So I got chills just thinking about it. So he goes, you know, Hunter, you've been following me for 20 years and helping, and you've been donating to my cause for 20 years. I think it's time for you to become a board member. And we've cut it from 20 to 10 because we want the most powerful professional people that we can have to know what we do and believe in what we do. And I've been to Haiti multiple times with Frank. I've been down to Frank's tree house, which is every time's a blessing, dude. I don't care. Even if I drive down, buy it. Frank's house. And it's not Frank's God or nothing. It's that it, it, I've learned so much from Frank and his books, all the books he's read. Matter of fact, I was got the opportunity to uh, uh, do a book. Uh, uh, part of the chapter of his book was the tap. Uh, Cause he told me, he goes, Hey Hunter, he goes, I want you to interview me on my book. And I said, well, you know, he goes, have you finished it? And I said, no, I haven't finished it yet. And he goes, well, you're not going to interview me until you finish it. Cause I was about halfway through and I was kind of dragging through it. So that gave me motivation to finish Frank's book, The Tap, and which is a great book. It's about being tapped, about making decisions and helping others and doing what God's given to you to give to others, you know? And uh, it, it's, it's just been awesome. So yeah, a hundred books I ordered. And then we, and then after the order, he, he asked us to be chair, uh, be board members. So we're blessed at being a board members of the Caring House Foundation. Uh, and you're one, of the first, you're one of the first to know. That's a great foundation. No, he, he is an awesome individual. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I got a lot of things I'm well in the mix with him. But yeah, awesome. Uh, any less encouraging words uh, for those tuning in? You know, don't get discouraged. Take care of yourself. Uh, learn. Learn what you want to do. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, hire somebody uh, to find and then follow them, you know. When I said I started real estate when I was 22, my first house I bought was when I was 22. And I almost lost that into foreclosure, by the way, because that's why I'm in. So my lifestyle at 22 didn't allow me to make my payments on my property. So be careful who you hang with, who you follow, and what you do. So my uh, second house that I rehabbed, I bought the rehab. I hired people, the electricians, the plumbers, and all that. So if you're going to do it that way, that's just the way to do it. I hired them, and I was their, I was their assistant. I was their laborer. So I learned early on how to do a lot of the things, which may have affected my income because I know how to do all these things, right? So now I, I but I can run a job, or I can do this, or whatever, multiple jobs. And I think that's pretty cool. So I just enjoy, enjoy what you're doing. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to freaking want to get out of bed, get motivated and get there to work. You're not going to do it. If you can't see your muscle flex and you're not going to go work out, right? You're not going to do it. If you don't see some kind of uh, result from what you're doing, you're not going to be excited about doing it. So do something you're excited about and stick with it and, and it'll come to you. Great, great, greatly said. 
we can keep talking to you for hours. This is supposed to be 15, 20 minutes. I knew it would go over, and I, I appreciate that, uh, Hunter. Uh, how can people connect with you? Uh, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, Hunter Paschal. That's P-A-S-C-H-A-L-L. -L. And you can contact my office at 407-772-2274 or 407-772-CASH. You can contact there. You can get in touch with us there. We're all over social media, as you said. Look me up, like and share. I'm going to like and share this. I know, and I hope it comes out. I hope, I hope we did a good enough job here to, to share oh, it with your group and, and all that. I'm sure we did. You're an awesome dude. I really appreciate you having me here. Um, finally, well, we met before on Zoom, right? We met once before. Um, we, you, clean up, you, you clean up pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we did, and I got one question off air for you. But, yes, the numbers, the uh, – the Facebook, I will link it on the video as well. So for those yeah, of you tuning yeah, in, they want to reach out to Hunter here, just go click on those below. And that, that does it, Hunter. So I'm going to stop at the video. And I got one question for you. Let's do it.